Hi everybody, welcome to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and today I've got some extra exciting news. So I've talked about Cherry MX switches and rubber domes. They are buckling springs too, but it's hard to get my hands on them. Anyway, and there is a whole new category. This is a hybrid by the way. This is the uh, Topre capacitive key switches. And today I'll be going over the Real Force series 104UB, which is the full size in stealth black, as well as the 87U10 keyless versions. This one is silent white using a different type of topre switch, and this is the stealth black. So, but before I unbox it, I do want to tell you a little bit about an introduction on topre. All right, so first things first is a big thank you to Elite Keyboards. Mwah! Thank you so much, EliteKeyboards.com, where you can purchase these Topra keyboards. Um, thank you so much for supplying the three keyboards so that we may talk about it and show everybody exactly what Topra Switch is and what it sounds like. So a little bit about what is Topra. So it's, well, it's also called Tokyo Press Kogyo. So, you know, Topra. <laughs> All right, um, and they are basically a, uh, a company that's based in Japan, and I believe they are the only uh, manufacturer of the Topre switches. They have gotten a patent on there. So I know a lot of vendors are clamoring to like get on that. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, as well, I mean, back to the whole company, they are known for making industrial uh, credit card readers, as well as touch sensors and touch panels, and they've set their sights on the uh, switch market. So what exactly is it? So a Topre switch is a cross between a uh, mechanical spring based switch and a rubber dome switch and how it looks is there's like this rubber dome covering over the conical spring and then when you press down on the key it'll activate the capacitive sensor so there you have it a very quick and easy lesson <laughs> um, but uh, aside from that uh, what makes the topre so freaking awesome is that it's meant to eliminate chatter. So it's like comfortable, it's tactile, and it lasts. That's what's so amazing about it. And I would say uh, for, you know, critical data entry applications, this is golden because that's where you don't want to make errors and you're typing all day long. You don't want the fatigue. And so what is chatter actually meant to talk about that if you didn't know is that when you press a key down, not holding it down, but just once, uh, if your switch is broken, it'll register like multiple strokes, which is a big no, no. Okay. <laughs> actually, no, no, it's like this. I don't know why I was like wiping. Anyway, <laughs> I am uh, digressing. Yes. So aside from that, uh, there is something about it is that it's actually not for gaming. I mean, you could use it for gaming, but it's not what the ideal use is for. It's more for uh, office environments because of the lack of media keys, programmable keys, backlighting, but still like for the feels, I would use it. I mean, this keyboard is seamless, by the way, seamless. <laughs> um, and also if you have a keypad and a programmable mouse, you're set. So why don't we go ahead and unbox. So here's a closer look at the 104UB full-size keyboard, standard QWERTY with numpad and you also get the home end and the navigational keys as well as full set of F keys, escape, and LED indicators here for caps lock, number lock, and all of that wonderful goodness. Alrighty, so first off, you'll notice that this is a very, very ninja-like keyboard, as in, where the heck are the letterings? I'm just kidding, I'm sure you can see it. But basically, it's got this like um, die sublimated, printed um, label for the letters like Q, W, you know, one, two, three, four, and it's black, black on dark gray, and then black, so, yeah, it doesn't get stealthier than this. I would call this the Batman keyboard <laughs> because he loves to work with monochromatic colors, right? Only dark gray and black, right? Oh, sometimes only dark gray if you watch the Lego movie. <laughs> but anyway, so back to the keyboard. Um, it uh, will give you some measurements actually. So it's 17 inches by 6.6 .6 inches by 1.5 inches or 456 millimeters by 169 millimeters by 39 millimeters. And you do get this rubberized cable with I believe USB 2.0 connection connector. And you get about five and a quarter feet or 1.5 meters of cable. I will turn it back to the bottom in just a bit to show you the cable channels, which I really do like on keyboards. And the weight, it's actually quite hefty, so you know it's very uh, made of some very sturdy material. It weighs at 1.4 kilograms or 3 pounds and 1 ounce, I believe, yes. So let me just like tap that and um, 
And it's very, it's like this thick quality plastic. And inside, you know, there is a layer in there between the switch, I believe, where it is, there is a steel plate. So really this entire keyboard is just quality. That's what I have to say about it. It's got this like matte finish on there. So it's not so prone to tracking fingerprints. Another plus for me. Um, however, I believe if you are gaming in dimly lit conditions, they recommend getting the um, white version. And the white version it's kind of cool. It looks pretty retro, to be honest. And uh, what else? Uh, I guess I could just flip it around to the back. Now on the back of the keyboard, they have these little rubberized feet here, which are grid pattern. It's not something that I see often, and it's really just to, like everything else, keep it in a place when you are using it. And it does come with angled feet for those of you who prefer this angle, although I would like to see the uh, negative slope as well on more keyboards. And here's the channel. So for the cable, you can either, one moment, uh, you could either have the cable coming out the top of the keyboard or tuck it neatly away like so. And I would love to see more keyboards that give you this option, maybe even more channels, who knows. But um, so far, this is definitely a uh, perk that I like about this keyboard. Now before I show you what the Topre switch looks like, I do want to tell you a little bit about what you see here. The keycaps and the lettering through dye sublimation, various fancy schmancy stuff for extended life. And why is it so durable? Well, it's made from PV PBT, which is polybutylene um, terephthalate. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a science major. Anyway, so those are the keycaps. Um, although the space bar is made from ABS, you can tell the difference. It's like night and day when you like feel the PBT keycaps and the ABS. It's just a much more velvety smooth feeling for the PBT. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use this wire puller here. By the way, this is what you want to remove keycaps not the plasticky round thing that could possibly damage your switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the S key. Just gonna go ahead and there we go, get a good grip on it and remove. There it is, very smooth. Now I'm gonna tilt this a bit. This, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Topre switch. Oh, that is smooth, you get that tactile bump. But it's just, God, it's like, oh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful feeling. So a little bit more about these Topre switches is that you get four millimeter travel and this particular keyboard, you get 35 to 45 gram actuation in uh, the letter area and 55 gram actuation waiting um, in the escape key. You could feel the difference. This one has a bit more resistance. So one other thing I did want to mention is that you can't um, get LED in there is because there is no hole in or around the switch for the manufacturer to include an LED. Here's a closer look at the 10 keyless white silent version. This keyboard, standard QWERTY. There's no number pad, as I said, it's 10 keyless, but you do get directional pads as well as home end and the print lock, snum lock, pause, and the num lock actually has a special feature this time. So when you have it on, you can access the number pad, hold on, in this section. So you'll notice on the bottom side of the keys, right here, one, two, three, above that four, five, six, and above that seven, eight, nine, and below that the zero, double zero, and uh, what is that? Anyway, so why do you um, need this? Well, for, you know, type is obviously, especially if you work for a lot of, with a lot of numbers, you do get a full numpad, which to me is like a major perk. And in the white version, you can definitely see these numbers better. So I would recommend getting the white version versus the black 10 keyless, unless you don't plan on using that and you just like the stealth look of it. And uh, I guess everything else is pretty standard, like your F keys, caps lock, Windows keys on both sides. But we're gonna go ahead and flip it over. And once again, high quality plastic material. So on the back, you get channels. This is for all the three keyboards that I'm gonna show you today. Also feet, and more of this grid pattern uh, rubberized feet on the bottom, which I really like, by the way. It's, it's a really, really nice touch. Um, but before I close this out and show you the black tank keyless and then give you a sound test of all of them together, did want to go over, one moment, the dimensions. 
Those are very important after all. So dimensions, it's 366 millimeters or 14.4 inches. This way, 6.6 .6 inches, 169 millimeters or 38 millimeters, 1.5 inches deep. Cable length, 1.6 meters, five and a quarter feet. And weight, 1.2 kilograms or two pounds. So it's, eh, it's not that heavy, but it's heavy enough where you're like, now this is quality. So three pounds for the full size keyboard, two pounds for each of the 10 keyless. And there is one thing on the back I did want to talk about. You see this little section here. This is where your dip switches are. And what exactly are your dip switches? It's basically lets you swap around, I believe, the caps lock and you know the control and uh, certain keys like that. Um, but we will include a, a diagram or photo showing you exactly what the switches do. Here's a closer look at the white 10 keyless version. And just like the other two keyboards, the full size and the black version, it uses PBT as well as, oh, I mean ABS for the spacebar, as well as die sub printing for the key caps. Now, if you want to have your keys show up, the lettering, you should probably go with the white version. Although the black version does look pretty sexy. If you are in a fully lit office condition, let's say, or just a very well lit room, black is just fine, to be honest. Alrighty then, so, uh, before I go ahead and pull the key cap, I want to mention that this is like the 104 UB version, 4 millimeter travel, 30, 45 gram actuation force, 55 gram for the uh, escape key. I want to explain a little bit why the grams are a bit different, I mean the actuation force for your ring finger and your pinky. Uh, so it reduces fatigue because they are not as strong as your other fingers. So that's why you get between 30 to uh, 45 gram across the board. Let's go ahead and remove the keycap, shall we? So this is a very strange angle to do this, but uh, let's remove the key. Alrighty, so here is the purple switch. And for real force, at least for the moment, like I mentioned, is that this is meant to be more quiet. So it is more like the brown cherry MX switch. Oh, you can barely hear that. Here's a closer look at the Stealth Black 10 keyless. So basically it is the, it has the same dimensions as the white 10 keyless. Also five and a quarter feet of cable length, uh, two pounds like I mentioned. Onto the actual keyboard, same material like the other two, PBT, and then spacebar ABS. Uh, and this actually, this one I would recommend for gaming more than the other two because it is all weighted 45 gram weighted, so 45 gram actuation for all the keys. And this is a special edition one, so that is very cool. Um, and it, like the white version, you get a full number pad here. It's somewhere here, here, you'll see it. But it's on the underside of the keycap. It's just really hard to see there, but you gotta believe me. So numlock to activate it or just use it for the uh, letters. Now for the back of the keyboard, once again, you get channels to hide your cables. I mean, to tidy them up, angled feet, as well as rubberized feet. Now here, just like the white tank keyless, you get dip switches, and I'm sure by now you know exactly what that is, right? Or maybe you already do. All right, before the sound test, I want to go over some of the accessories that come with these two tank keyless types. So you get this kind of like a dark gray cream, that's what I call it, because the white, it's like a cream color, and then you get some dark gray cream on the edges. You get a caps lock and control in case you want to swap them, you know, using your dip switch. Now, um, it also comes with this rather large keycap puller. So unlike the, uh, unlike the regular keycap puller, you have this kind of fatter one to fit around the caps lock and the control. So that's really cool. And for the black version, it comes with a red escape key and of course black keycaps for uh, caps lock and uh, control, yes. And it also comes with a metal key puller. Now onto the sound test. So one more time, every single one of these keyboards, including the full size, comes with PBT material and then of course ABS um, for the um, spacebar. Um, and also, like I said, the white one is for silent. So it's the purple switch, so it's gonna sound a lot more silent than the black regular Topre switch. We're gonna give it a sound test now. You should hear the difference, but let me do singular keys. 
have it. It's time for pros and cons. So what do I love about it? Obviously the build quality. I mean, this thing is like built to last. It's like German engineering in Japan. <laughs> Although Japanese engineering is pretty good too, right? I mean, if you look at a Honda, it's like a cheapo little car, but it lasts like 10 years or something. But I'm, yeah, off topic. So what I love about it, I do like the compact keyboards. Even though it doesn't have the number pad, there is a number pad in there on the keyboard. So just numb lock. And so for me, it's great. It's great for taking around. It's you know, like traveling. It's easy to pack away. Good stuff. Full size keyboard, also very nice. And like I said, for gaming, if you wanted to, it to be, I would get the black 10 keyless because of the all 45 gram weight waiting. And the white, it is easier to see the numbers on here. So for typists, for accounting people, for, uh, you know, just uh, secretary work stuff. Um, if you really need to see the numbers, please get the white version and the lettering and stuff. Now, what else do I like about it? Uh, do love the coating. It just feels good on your hands. It's like this nice, velvety, smooth feeling, you know? It's different from ABS. And you, you won't really know exactly what I mean until you try it out for yourself. And just the, the feels and the sound of it, it's honestly, it is like butter skating for your fingers. Now imagine that, butter skating. <laughs> yes, for dramatic effect. And now for the cons. Well, first of all is the price. That's an obvious one. It is expensive, like what? Uh, running in the $200 range for these keyboards. However, you do get what you pay for. And you know, Joe had a really good um, a comparison, like you're getting a BMW versus a Honda. While both are good, you do pay a lot more for the premium product, am I right? <laughs> and I know there are those of you out there who wanna throw money at these keyboards. <laughs> Alrighty, um, as for other cons, like I said, it's not for gaming, but if you did want to use it for gaming, all 45 gram actuation, the Black 10 keyless is the one I would recommend. Alrighty, um, is that there are no multimedia keys. Would I like to see, see that? And of course, I understand why there can't be LED backlighting, but come on, the black, it's just, I, if it's very dimly lit, you can't see the keys, and they're right about that. Um, and my room isn't even that dark. But I do like the stealth factor too, so if you're using it in a like, well-lit office environment. This black one, I actually like a lot more than the white one, although the white one does, you know, it's, it's kind of nice. <laughs> uh, what else? What of like programmable keys, you know, per key backlighting or yeah, even backlighting, things like that, that you would see on a lot of gaming keyboards. But like I said, you know, have a game keypad, have a gaming mouse, and just use these buttery smooth keys to do your research, to journal, I don't know, whatever floats your boat. Well, that wraps it up for these Real Force keyboards, the 87Us, as well as the 104UB. Thank you so much once again, Elite Keyboards, for providing them so I can show people and I can test it out. That's what I love about what I do. I get to test out the products. Like, I spent, like, all day just, like, playing with it and stuff like that. And like, anyway, so, but that's how I'm able to bring you a more thorough unboxing or a review. If you enjoyed what you saw and you want to see more, be sure to hit the subscribe button, like, and comment, because I love hearing what you have to say to me about the product or just life or you have a question, you know. Um, and also, please follow me on social media, Joanne Tech Lover for uh, Facebook, Joanne Food Lover Twitter, and twitch.tv slash whaletune for game streaming that I stream weekly with Tim. Game of choice is World of Warcraft right now, but he's like, buy Wildstar. I'm like, but it's so expensive. Okay, um, but it's fun. It's really fun. Um, and what else? I guess one last thing is please help donate and keep this channel running so I can like show you more products and all that good stuff. And of course, it's to feed me. Oh. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, I say goodbye to you.